I've completed the centerpiece of my garden. It completely changes the look, the feel, and the flow of my garden space. But it didn't happen overnight. I knew this was coming four years ago. Join me today as I discuss planning garden structures. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott. And when I say that this structure is the centerpiece of my garden, I mean that figuratively, but I also mean it literally. When I moved to this house four years ago, none of this was here. And as I was starting to develop my garden plan, I measured out this space. I walked it, I measured it, and I determined that this was the center of my garden. Well, this rebar stake has been in the ground for four years, identifying this as the center. In fact, if you look in the background closely at many of my videos, you'll see that this stake has been here all that time. I knew I wanted a structure here. Now this center part of the garden will be a hard structure. So it's important that the stakes identify the exact width, the size that it's going to be. I wasn't sure of the type of structure that I was going to put in place, but I wanted a spot in the exact center of my garden that I could sit and enjoy the space, soak in all that wonderful garden energy and make this the centerpiece. Structures are very important elements in garden design. Without any structures, you just have a field with plants growing in it. But with the structures in place and with those planned structures as part of your garden design, you can create a space with multiple gardens, multiple spaces, multiple rooms that are designed exactly how you want them to be. I like the idea of building a garden with separate rooms. One of the rooms is a vegetable garden. One of the rooms is a pollinator garden. One of the rooms is a ruminating garden. Whatever rooms you choose, you can use different design elements to separate the rooms and to control your flow through the garden from one room to another. And this centerpiece does that. As I showed in earlier videos, I spent a lot of time developing my garden plan before I put the structures in place. One of the very first structures I built was this archway. The two solid wooden beds with the arch in between. The reason for this archway is because this is the entrance to my main garden area. From here, I walk directly to the center underneath my gazebo. From the center, I can walk south into my vegetable garden. One area is my wooden raised beds, and I have a separate room with a separate entrance for my enclosed garden. Heading to the east, I get into a pretty big room. This is my mini orchard. This is where I have my fruit trees, some fruit bushes. I'll be putting in many more plants and another sitting space in the future. Heading to the north, I go to my greenhouse, a separate room on its own. But before I get to the greenhouse, this whole space is a room of its own. I've already started by putting in some columnar apple trees, and this space down here is going to be a Moncala garden with beautiful flowers and herbs growing. Heading to the west, you can see how I designed this crossroads. Just inside the archway, I can venture in one direction go to this series of beds that include asparagus and raspberries. Going in the other direction, 
I have more fruit bushes and asparagus and it's a separate entrance into my vegetable garden. I use my plants as walls to help define the space between these separate rooms. So you really can't enter the garden through this bed because of all the plants growing. And you can't enter the garden through that side because of all the plants growing. The only way to enter the garden as designed is through that primary archway entry point. I achieved the same thing in this area of my garden with garden structures. They're low metal raised beds from forever garden beds. You might not think of these as garden structures, but a structure doesn't have to be tall and big for it to help direct traffic and to separate one room from another. And that's what I'm doing here. You can't walk to the vegetable garden from the center point and vice versa without being directed through this path. While it's relatively easy to put in a raised bed and help direct the flow of the traffic, some of these bigger structures do take time to plan and build and work into the budget. And that's why I've developed my five-year plan. Over the course of years, I plan for one major structure each year. In the first year of my garden, my focus was on building these structures. I wouldn't raise beds that would form my vegetable garden. In the second year of my garden, I built this enclosed bed space. It took a long time to build, and this was the major project that year. Year three was all about the greenhouse. Getting it, building it, and beginning to use it. And now in year four, it's the gazebo. Because I knew this was coming, I didn't have to wait to put plants in the ground. With a plan that includes the structures you're going to put in, you can go ahead and start the plants, particularly those fruit bushes that I wanted to grow that I knew was going to take a number of years before they started producing. And so after identifying the center point, I identified where the beds were going to be, laid them out, covered them with mulch, and put plants in the ground. And now, all these years later, I have my fruit bushes beginning to show fruit. These are my gooseberries. Over on this side, I have my currants. One corner has honey berries, and another corner has these aronia. Now, they've been a little slow taking off because they keep being eaten by the deer, but all four corners are growing. And so I already have established plants in place, and now the structure is here to help highlight them. These went in years ago because I knew that that structure was coming. And these beautiful gooseberries are ready for harvest. I don't think that garden structures need to be big and man-made. They can be quite simple and natural, like this log that I buried into the ground to act as a garden stool. You might not think of it as a structure, but it's not a plant, and it does help direct the flow of the traffic it has a definite design element, and for me, I consider it a structure. But I am planning on putting more built structures in this garden space because it's a little bit flat. I like to have that height, and I have that difference in texture as I'll walk through it and use the different structures to make that impact. Now, for years, when I've referred to the structure that was going to go in this space, I said I was going to put a pergola here, and that was indeed the original plan, a wooden pergola with an open slat roof. But this year in particular, we had a lot of rain, and now the sun is extremely harsh. And with those recurring conditions, I decided I wanted a hard roof structure. So I moved away from the wooden pergola, 
and I saw this metal gazebo and knew it was going to be perfect. And I love it. I think the visual impact is better than I anticipated. But the work is just beginning. The structure is in place, but there are many other design elements that really make the structures work better. I'm going to put stone pavers here and brick pathways and turn this into a more formal sitting space. And of course, I'll need the outdoor furniture. You'll see all of that in future videos. For now, to see how I got to this point and how I used other design elements, check out these videos now. I'm Gardner Scott. Enjoy gardening.